Hello everyone and welcome to <laughs> This is Europe and here's Norway. Now let's have a look, shall we? As the stiff, bitter grip of the last ice age began to slacken, human beings stepped onto the Norwegian coast and there eked out a frost-bitten living as hunter-gatherers. New settlers arrived centuries later and introduced farming and the area progressed into a Bronze Age and then an Iron Age that in turn birthed a number of small kingdoms, which we don't know a whole lot about apart from the semi-mythical records of the Icelandic sagas. And during all this time, the people grew more and more acquainted with the sea, a relationship that characterized the next and most famous portion of Norway's history, the Viking Age. For some reason, in the 8th century, no one's exactly certain why, the inhabitants of the Norse lands took to the seas and began attacking, plundering, and enslaving all over the place. Not only were these Vikings feared fighters, but they were also skilled navigators. The Norwegian Erik the Red sailed to Greenland in the late 900s and established settlements, and his son journeyed further to what's now Canada. These were the sort of ships they were building. This one here is an excellently preserved specimen unearthed in 1904. The quality of craftsmanship is strikingly obvious. Tradition holds that in the 9th century, Harold Fairhair became the first king of a united Norway. His son had the charmingly pleasant name of Eric Bloodaxe. Over time, Christianity began to permeate the region and spread at a quicker pace after the reign of Olaf II, who was later canonized as a saint and had this gothic cathedral built over his burial site. After a tumultuous civil war, the Kingdom of Norway achieved its pinnacle in the 1200s under Håkon IV. The country was decimated by the Black Death in the mid-1300s and, under Margaret I in 1397, Denmark, Norway and Sweden joined together as the Kalmar Union in response to the German economic powerhouse known as the Hanseatic League of Merchants, who already had a firm footing in Norway, dominating trade in the city of Bergen. The union lasted till 1523 when Sweden broke away and thus it became known as Denmark-Norway. Not a very imaginative name, but whatever. Meanwhile, amidst the Reformation, Protestant Christianity succeeded in replacing the Catholic Church in the territory after being championed by Christian III. Under Christian IV, Denmark-Norway warred with Sweden over geo-economics and then entered the Thirty Years' War over geopolitics. But Christian IV was unsuccessful in his ambitions after losing this battle against the Holy Roman Empire, and so he went back to bickering with Sweden, concerned at that country's increasing power. And what do you think happened next? I'll give you a clue. It starts with W. That's right. Water skiing. Fun for everyone. No, of course not. Fun for no one except maybe Sweden, who won the war and gained more land. So horrible was this loss for Denmark. Yes, Norway was pretty much just a colony of Denmark at this point. That more non-water skiing attempts at getting the ground back were made, but none of them succeeded. Anyway, in the 19th century, no sooner was Norway freed from Danish rule than it was taken over by Sweden. Sorry, entered into a personal union with Sweden. Though their aspirations for independence were thwarted for the present, the Norwegian people did not lose hope and nationalism blossomed through the rosy lenses of the romantic movement as the population surged and the economy thrived. The merchant fleet expanded and industrialization thrust the nation into modernity. In 1905, Norway at long last separated from Sweden and became a sovereign country. They even got a new king complete with a splendid mustache. Norwegian explorers became the first to reach the South Pole in 1911 and while Norway remained neutral in World War I, the Second World War saw the Germans invade in April 1940, and the Norwegians were like, no way, and the Germans were like, yes way, and took control. After the war, Norway made rapid economic progress, and though it was a founding member of NATO, it chose not to join the EU. Norway today is one of the richest and freest countries in the world, and sits at the very top of the Human Development Index, with a very high quality of life, a very low crime rate, and a socio-economic setup that is the envy of the world. And just to show off some more, it's also really beautiful. And we can't forget about Norway's accomplishments, the greatness it has produced in the realms of art and music, in science, in literature, and in sport. Norway has won more gold medals in the Winter Olympics than any other country. Not bad for a nation that promotes penguins to high ranks in the military. So that's it for Norway, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye <laughs>